Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Eddie here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in another creepy tale, some other place. Now this was again developed by Creepy Brothers, published by Sometimes You and is available for just £8.39 slash $9.99. So once again this is what, the fourth in the... Uh, series now and it's still an absolute another cracker We've, it takes place in a completely new story in another new world um with monsters and all the likes to smash through or to cleverly get past as it were now as for achievements just like in the previous creepy tales there are a uh, few sort of miscellaneous ones um you know i if you've played the creepy tales, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's just li little sort of easy ones uh, that we have to get through. Plus, there's seven wells that we have to screen down. So, all in all, it's generally a nice, uh, easy achievement list again. But again, have a look at the achievement timestamps in the comments section below. But all in all, this should take... Now, obviously, I smash through the dialogue uh, as we can. But all in all, it should take around between an hour and a half to about an hour and 45. So... With that being said then, let's do it! So, press the A button to go and then press the A button to play. You know how it goes. There are no settings, I don't know why I went into settings. We're going to play. I mean, there are settings, but there's no settings to change in this particular type of settings, you know what I mean? Right, so we're actually going to be coming up to our first achievement straight away, and it is for catching all of the fish. Now... What plays, again, if you just want to smash through the dialogue with the A button, but what you'll have to do, um, once he puts his fishing rod in the water, um, a little circle will come up, and it's basically one of those mini games where you have to just hit the green part of the circle, and you have to do that three times in order to get the a rich catch achievement for catching all the fish. So here we are then, it is just about to start. And you'll see exactly what I mean. So you have to do this three times. A circle appears and you just have to put the marker into the green part of the circle as it goes around. You know, rather easy and cheesy enough. You scared me. Oh wait, sorry. No, that's not my nan. That's that's no one's nan. Nobody's nans are that hairy. I'm just joking. Uh, my nan's not that hairy. I love my nana. Okay. Anyway, go ahead and follow the hairy little dumpling. Um, whatever, whatever it is. Kind of looks just like a moldy rotten bit of fruit. But make sure to scream into this well first of all. So press the A button when you get close to this well. As soon as he gives it a woo, or my favorite is. A woo! A woo! There it is. That's my favorite one. So once you've screamed into the well, follow the old hairy football. And in we go. Hmm. Where did you go? <laughs> oh 
Noech, no. The Chew Crapper. That's what I'm going to call it. It's like a... It's like a Chewbacca, but small and... Um, insignificant. Yeah, the Chew Crapper. Right, so head to the right, and we're going to pick up this first item off the ground here before we get another achievement. Head to the left and try and knock on the door of the tree that we just came out of. And that'll get you the... There's no turning back! Sorry, it's half five in the morning. My okay. my voice is not yet activated. Uh, but once you've knocked it a couple of times, the no turning back achievement should a um, a pop. Okay. And there uh, it is. Alright then, so head to the left. Continue heading to the left. And we're going to speak to another Chew Crapper. Now this one looks sweaty, but he's just full of moldy molds on his mold. Spots. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, now give him the old fish that we just picked up from the tree earlier on. And he's going to lick his teeth, weirdly. <laughs> okay, so the true crapper has given us some kind of giant bean for dinner or something. So anyway, continue heading over to the right hand side. And we're going to come up to a door. Now, the designs are not actually crap. I'm just calling it a true crapper because it's hairy. It's uh, it's not because um, it's a crap design or anything. The whole game is awesome. So, once you've popped your giant bean in, head inside of the house. And we're going to grab a couple of items right meow. The first one is going to be on the uh, right-hand side. And we'll open up and grab a... Little ball, a little circly ball, and then from here, um, you can have a sniff of dinner if you want, but it actually smells like uncleaned Ani. Uh, so then we will head up the ladder, and there are two other shapes that we're going to grab. The first one off the shelf on the right, and then a little bit further up is the square. And what we'll do is actually try and interact with the top of the ceiling as well, and that'll knock down another fish. Then we'll head down. Uh, let's grab the fish. There it is. And then we are going to interact with this next puzzle. Now, once you've popped all of the, the circle, the square, and the triangle in, how you do this, um, so you'll actually have to press, obviously, the Y button. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Press the Y button to open your inventory and the A button to use. So once you've popped all of the square, the circle, and the triangle in, what you'll see is... Once they shake, there's going to be one of these latches that don't shake. And the one that doesn't shake, you need to put, you need to click that specific shape. So wait till it shakes. And as you can see, it's the triangle. So you need to click the triangle. And then once they shake again, look for the one that's not moving. It's the square. And then just do it for the rest. It should then be circle, square, triangle, circle. Alright, so let's pick up the item that we have inside. So another nice easy puzzle, just to ease you into it as it were. So now we can head over to the right. We are going to um, use the dead fish, first of all. And then we're going to use the flint, which we picked up. So, and you'll have to do it yourself by pressing the A button. So once you've got that going, ah oh my god, that smells rotten. But protein's protein, broskies. You gotta get it down here. Ah, the little birdie likey likey the fish fish and we're not done yet so we're gonna head to the left and out of the house again just a random house with nobody living in here we'll take that head to the right and very careful just pick up the item here off the ground one of the poisonous or hanging mushrooms obviously don't get smashed up by L uh, angro right there heading back into the house and we will go and pop in the Rotten fruit that we just popped in. And that gets rid of all the deliciousness. Whoa, imagine a little birdie scaring one of those monsters. 
which kind of just resembles an Instagram influencer before they put the filters on. Huh. <laughs> anyway, head back out of the house. Again, we're going to go to the right, but not too far to the right. You don't want to scare the before filter influencer. So just to the tree where it was gnawing, and we're going to pick up one of the mushrooms, go back inside, and we are going to put that rotten mushroom straight in the pot where our little chew crapper friend, who I thought looked sweaty, but just turned out to have boils and stuff on him, he's going to come a-running. To be fair, that kind of just uh, reminds me of my own cooking. I just cook a lot of, you know, proteiny and sort of healthy stuff, but it smells like actual garbage. And it doesn't taste much better either, but hey, health and stuff. Okay, up the ladder we go. Give that a little smashy smash smash. And our old chew crapper friend, after almost chew crapping his pants, um, after we run after us, he's going to give us another bean to put in. And we're going to head straight up, straight in. Mm. Let's do it. Right, so now we are going to come up to another achievement where we're going to be jumping and going up and down and a lot and pushing and pulling a bunch of levers in order to not kill off the woodpecker. So first of all, jump up and head to the right and head down. Here we are. And then head down again. And then pull the lever. Again, don't worry about the Instagram influencer just below you. She or... Oh, E or it, well, I don't know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna bother us. Head to the right and jump up on this little tree pad. Then we're going to go to the left. No, the right. No, the left. Sorry, getting a bit confused there. No. So to the left, and we're gonna go through the weird tree portal. So again, our job is now to, and again, the reason we've done that is to get the lever going, first of all, which is why we had to do that. So head to the right. Now we can jump to the right. Now we're going to jump down and use the lever. So our job is basically to get the woodpecker. Even though the woodpecker can fly, we've got to get it back to the left-hand side. So dropping down and jumping back straight back up. Head to the left, jump over and nip through to the portal to the other side. Okay, jump up then. And the woodpecker is going to be all like, meh, meh. And you're going to be like, bruh, you're a bird. But birds can be ferocious, huh? Drop down, drop down again. And again, interact with the lever. And that should get the um, portal open, or the tree open. Ah, little Woody Woodpecker. <gasps> Anybody remember Woody Woodpecker? Ah, my favorite, my <laughs> literally one of my favorite cartoons. I never used to go out, I just used to watch cartoons like a loser. But hey, who's the loser now, huh? Still me. All right, anyway, so jump up and then drop down. Head to the right this time and drop down again. And we are going to... J Jesus, true crapper, what you doing, man? Sorting us out again? Man, these broskies are... They are, they are top skis. Hit the lever. And it's going to... Uh, <laughs> well, it got a little bit cold then and went back inside itself. Jump up and to the right again. Head, uh, Drop down. And hit the next lever here. Uh, luckily, that one's not getting cold. That one is uh, firm. Yeah. Uh, pop the wood. Uh, the woodpecker here will take his little woodness to the left, and we're gonna actually kick the lever up again, so he can't go back through the portal. And he's gonna be like, "Hey, what the hell?" And we're gonna be like, "Jump up." To the left again. Yes, this is very puzzly, this part. Uh, to the left again. Drop down. 
and then we're going to jump, uh, jump over to the left and jump up onto off the pad and head through the portal where we are going to give it a little bangy, bangy, bang, bangy, bangy, bang, 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 bang. Oi! Mr. Woody Woodpecker will pop over and we're just going to head back through. So from here, drop back down <laughs> and then to the right. Jump over to the right again. Jump to the right again, or go to the right again, drop down. And we're going to hit the lever again. Oh, it got it got a little bit cold again. It squidged itself in. It's basically like, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you. You know exactly what it looks like. Um, <laughs> so let's not even start with that before I get shouted at by some people again. You're disgusting. I'm sorry. Anyway, that should actually be that. That is uh, for passing by the woodpecker and leaving it alive. So there we go. You think it never ended? And it didn't. It did. So anyway, jump up, head to the left and to the left again. There's the woodpecker back in its original perch. We're going to head down and we're going to jump down uh, to the... Uh, jump to the left, jump up and go through the portal. We're going to now jump to the left again, through to the next portal on the left, and that should finally get us down, but oh no, oh wait. Come on, crap bags, sort us out, blood. All right, spanking your hairy. Thank you, and your hairy, muff. Right, let's go. To the right it is, make sure to shout into the next well here. Give it the, oh! <coughs> Yeah, my manliness is gone now. But once you have shouted anyway, continue heading to the right where you're going to see... Now, they just look more like turds in a toilet bowl. Um, but we are going to go down the well now. You're sick. Thank you, crap bags. Much appreciated again. Right, make sure to shout into this well as well. This one does count. This should be the third out of seven wells. Give it the old woo. Nah, I can't do it. Uh, from here, once you've shouted into the well, we're just going to head to the right past uh, this creepy old looking thing. It is called a creepy tail, I suppose. Um, where we are going to go past the old gnome troll and head straight down the ladder. So, obviously a few things to do here, as we've got to do in every section of the game. Otherwise it wouldn't be a game, it would be... Um... Not a game, I suppose. So, once we have headed down, uh, we can grab a piece of coal from the left. Oh, apparently we're going to go to the right first. We're going to grab um, an item off the floor here. So grab an item just by the coal track. And then we're going to head to the left and grab another piece of coal. And then from here... Yes, you've seen an edit. Um, we are going to head back up. I mean, the one thing I don't get about anyone in these situations to get into a scary world is we'll head to the left. You know, you're in a weird random place with scary old monsters and you're not moving faster than that. That's... I'd literally be sprinting for my life, although I wouldn't get very far. I'm like Homer Simpson, me. After sprinting for 0.5 of a second, I get all... <gasps> anyway, pop the shiny mushroom in and the coal. Uh, this should be the only two items that you've got. And then hit the branch on the left. And that'll fire up that mushroom like a mad ting on a scrat ting. I don't know, young people know what that means. Skibbity toilet bowl and stuff like that. Anyway, head to the right. Man, I'm officially old. Jesus Christ, it happened. Head to the right and back down the ladder as I look at my life's choices and get uh, depressed about my oldness. 
Uh, nah, I don't care. I'm glad I didn't grow up with calling people skibbity fam and toilet ram and... I don't know, whatever stupid young people say these days. We're going to head down to the right. And we're going to go all the way to the right. And you're going to see Broski right here, chilling. We are going to put the now fried mushroom on the... <laughs> and to be honest, this is what vegans get every time they go to a restaurant. Do you cater for vegan people? Yes, here's a mushroom. It's not exactly what they meant, but, you know, close enough. Um, <laughs> man, it's it's got to be tough being a vegan. Sometimes. So anyway, once you have uh, robbed Broski's items, we can now put this guy. So you need to press the A button and then, of course, the left stick. And there should be one specific rock just above the miner's head. Um, you need to get him hit in the crack. <laughs> that That's not a... Dr. Disrespect joke, by the way. We're not hitting a miner's crack. Did I just say that out loud? <laughs> anyway, once the miner has been hitting that rock, the, the old, that's the, uh, I can't remember what, what it's called, but that's the screen heard in everything you've ever heard. So, first of all then, um, we are going to go to this puzzle here and very easy enough it should always be the same every single time but with the red green and blue so with the red one on the left hand side you're going to put the dial to the um to the bottom right hand corner so kind of like four o'clock right there with the green one in the middle we are going to put that one all the way up so it's pointing sticking straight in the air at 12 o'clock and then blue that's going to be a two o'clock classic and then that should automatically be done. Uh, so now we uh, will come back to that in just a bit. Grab the pickaxe there from the miner's hand. And head over to the right hand side. Now, I ended up picking pickaxe in the first one. Again, it's the same mini game as you do with the fishing. Um, but it's pretty much the item that we need is always going to be in the very right hand side one. So you don't actually have to do all three of these rocks. Just the third one right here on the right hand side. And that'll get the big blue shininess that we're after. So once you do have that, we're going to head over to the left hand side. And we are going to torment a miner. Again, this is not a Dr. Disrespect achievement. We are going to use the pickaxe here on the left-hand side. And you're going to get that. If you miss, don't worry about it. You don't get panicked or anything. All we got to do is just wake up this troll three times. Uh, and that'll piss him off. And we'll get the achievement called Alarm Clock for Tormenting a, uh, tormenting a Miner. Again, and I say this. Uh, should have been called Dr. Disrespect, because that would have been a lot funnier. But still, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so once you've done that three times anyway, achievement should unlock the alarm clock, tormenting a miner. <laughs> and then once that is done with the basket next to him, we will put the blue gemstone, or the shiny new gemstone that we popped in. Then we're going to hit the rock, and he's going to send that bad boy up. <laughs> So we're going to climb back up the ladder, and luckily for us, Broski at the top there, he doesn't move from looking at the gemstone. He's going to be in that position till the end now, so... Well, that works for us, huh? Baba da boopy. Sorry, I just offended all Italians, and they now hate me. Sorry. Sorry. Please love me. Don't cancel me again. Gen Z, brah. Don't cancel me, ah. Uh. Right, so head to the um, little tin shack, whatever he was working on. We can actually now head inside. And there are two puzzles that we need to so, uh, figure out in order to get this one done and get this it's kind of like a giant walking robot sorted. So first of all head to the right hand side one. We can't do the left one until we've done the right one. So let us take a little look. Now, how you do this puzzle so you need to squish this thing around 
And then what you'll see, so the top two dials, they will start heading to the left towards the little red path there. The two dials on the bottom will go the other way. So what you need to do, um, it's kind of tricky to explain, but when you're at the top two dials, you need to keep spinning it around until it sort of almost kind of breaks. Looks like it's breaking on itself. Doing that, we'll get the two bottom dials heading towards the redness on the right hand side. But again, you do have to be careful because you don't want to overshoot, especially the top right hand side one. So, I'm trying, uh, hopefully that does make sense, but what you'll need to do is keep going there, and as you can see, once it looks like it's breaking down, again, the top, the, the bottom two dials will go towards the red on the right-hand side, and then, now you see, I was, um, <laughs> I was getting a little bit too cautious right there, um, but with the bottom ones, as soon as they're on the bottom ones, just leave it go, and you, you, Again, with the two top ones, you have to go until it sort of looks like it's breaking down. Um, it's probably easier to do it, though, with just the top left one, um, as the top right one, as you can see, can go past the red. So it's a little bit tricky to sort of get used to, and uh, it's a little bit confusing. Very clever puzzles in this game. Um, now, I was going to edit, edit it down. This takes about a minute. For me to sort of get into here but i was going to edit it down slightly but instead of editing it down i decided not to bother because as you can see there we go so yeah i literally just decided to smash it so once it's broken down um the uh, once it or looks like it's broken down the top two top dials will return to the middle part making it easier for us then to just go ahead and nip it all there so again, wait until we get here to the top left one, lighten up, and then just smash that one out. And then that should be enough to get all the four dials in the red, and away we go. Alright then, so, once you have, what we need to do now is put the, uh, hit the lever, sorry. So once we've hit the lever, that'll get out this big helmet looking ting. Sorry, mate. So, so, hmm. Well, goodbye, my lovers, I guess. Okay, so now we're going to do the puzzle on the right. This one, thankfully, is a lot easier. So once we just smash this open with the pickaxe here. There it is. We're going to pick up the robot helmet looking Tingo Scrat. Pop it over to the right hand side. And again, this time we just have to. Flick open, or oh, flick a couple of switches up and down, and this one is a lot, a lot easier. So, first of all, put the middle switch over to the N over on the left-hand side, and then click, uh, flick up the third switch and the fourth switch, and then go ahead and leave the rest down, and then hit the big button on the left-hand side. So that'll be good. That'll lock that in place. And then with the middle button again, I click that over to the M for Mugragi or Madre. Or it's not Magagi's birthday. Over to the right hand side there. And next we are going to click up the first, the second, put the third one down and then hit the rest of them up. So literally the everything up except for the third switch. Hit the big red shiny rain, reindeer nosed button. And there we go, that MF. <laughs> you done it, MF. Pop that in the middle. Job done. And now we are going to pull the lever and we're going to get some robot walking stuff right now. Now, the uh, this one, uh, this little puzzle is more of a feel uh, type puzzle. So what you're going to see, you're going to hold the A button until there's a red, there's going to be a red circle. <laughs> hold the A button until that goes all the way around and then let go. If you keep holding it, the robot will break down, and you'll just basically have to do this section again. Um, so you're gonna see it right here as soon as we've <laughs> as soon as the robot stretched its legs. I didn't know it could lose feeling in its legs. So hold the A button, and again, once the red circle is at full, let go, and it should jump. 
Again, don't hold it for too long. Otherwise, you will just break down and you'll have to do this bit again. Um, now, eventually, a bird or some blood or something is going to uh, get on our screen, rendering us useless and then we can't be able to see which is why what you'll need to do then is feel the vibration with your control you'll know it's right when the vibration gets ever so vibration -y. you ju you'll just know but you have to sort of feel your way through the next couple uh, the next few seconds or so So, just like every 1970s car, it literally exploded after just a couple of miles. Right, so head over to the right, we're going to find another well. Um, after Big Backer gets knocked out, or something, by something. Hey, it's the thief. It's the thief. So, head into the well, or scream into the well. Give it another woo. Woo! <coughs> Let's not do that then. Okay. Right. All right, man, we've already screamed into the bloody well. Right, so head back to the right, and we can now grab Chew Crapper, our original Crapper. Hello, Crapper, my friend. Oh, he's not dead. That's good. What the hell? If this thing's the most giant thing on this island, what the hell knocked him out? Hmm. In Terror Dusting. Is the do you want? So that was a very interesting drawing right there. It looked like um, excited slash scared monsters. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go and save the day. Because we've always got to save the day in this kind of game. So once we appear out of the well, make sure remember to scream into it once more. Give it the old... Yoo-hoo! Big summer blowout! Eventually, there we go. Right. There we go. So once we have managed to do that, now what we're going to do is keep walking to the right, but continue spamming the A button. We're going to find our brother's button for an achievement, but the prompt doesn't appear on screen. So it's right here, uh, just next to the... I mean, it's all full of trees, but... Yeah, so if you just keep walking to the right, keep spamming the A button... In this area, right here, where I'm shaking it. Shake it. Capital knockers, madam. Uh, that's where you're going to find the button. Now, unfortunately for us, we are going to get... Uh, well, there's something disgusting that we're going to do. That's going to put even the weirdest of foot fetishists off. Surely. And yes, you probably know what's coming here. So, head, <laughs> head over to the left-hand side and give the old witch bags... A little chat. Gross. Ah, what's wrong? I am looking for a monster's egg. What's a quag? Ah, they're nasty. They make like they love. That's okay. They're not a fr <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there enough? And there ain't no way we get out of this if we want every single achievement. We are going to have to rub the most foulest things on the planet. And here we go. Look. 
And you can already you can already probably smell exactly what that's like as well. Just look at it. <laughs> anyway, so rub red rub red. Click on all the red disgusting parts, which is all of it, and then just do the slight mini game, and then you can unspew yourself. Gross man. <laughs> Finally it's done, but you're now going to have to go and cut your hands off or disinfect them until they all burn off. Die Gustin. But you'll get the um, achievement anyway, skillful hands. Um... Again, don't put your fingers in your mouth now, not after, not until you wash, because you're going to be uh, losing a couple of stone out of sick. Anyway, so that's the achievement done. Now we're going to head over to the right. She will let us out. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it now for this area. Eventually, she'll just knob off then. Thank God. Well, here we are. Head forwards, don't take any after you've crossed them. Hi, <sighs> my. Okay, since she flies away then, make sure to scream into the next well right here. Give it the old awoo. And the last one's not going to come up for a while yet. So, with that one done. Yeah, alright. Yeah, alright, damn it. Okay, there we go, we're good. I'll head to the right hand side again. Of course, this, that is the only uh, way to go. Interact with this uh, ring, or... It's an item which is going to be a ring in a little bit. Boop. Right, so from here, head to the left. In fact, it is the ring, so we're going to head to the left now. And what you're going to see is like these three little stone statues. So what you'll do is obviously press the Y button and the A button to get the ring out. Now for this part, what you're going to need to do is, you can see on his nose there, there's white and there's three shapes and three different colors. In order to get past this bit, Whatever comes up on his teeth, you need to do the opposite. So, if it's a white moon, make sure that you do a white eye. So, you it can't be the same color and it can't be the same symbol. So you've got to do the opposite of whatever one it is. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to that puzzle. So, again, if it's the if it's the same color or if it's the same symbol. Do the opposite. It cannot be the same color or the same symbol as whatever pops up on his teeth. Uh, and when that one is done, you'll get the ancient technology for activating the artifact, which is pretty much story related anyway. And with this one, what you'll what you'll do then is you can actually kill things off and alive things up by pressing the X button or holding the X button. I just pressed the X button twice and it seemed to work. And the first thing that we're going to do is alive some maggots which are in the well so there we go once he's going all like oh my god you uh, can well it does say to hold down the button to see the artifacts range but i just went ahead and pressed the x button twice and that seemed to work no problems so uh with the right hand side there with the thing on the floor and then with the well make sure to to hit the x button once there on the well to get the maggot master achievement that just sounds like uh an, an old Slipknot song rather than, new, rather than a new one. Unfortunately, Slipknot these days are a bit, you know, with songs like Warranty and, yeah, not as good. But Slipknot do have uh, Slipknot Jr., Vended, which, if you don't know Vended and you haven't listened to Vended, go and listen to Vended, because goddamn, they kick ass. They are slammingly good. 
Right, so uh, this next achievement that we're going to grab can be a little bit finicky and a little bit tricky. So where the tree monster just stood, if you press the X button, you can see uh, that you've just grown a radish. You need three types of radishes in your inventory. So the first one will pop up right here, which is just a normal one. And we'll press the X button again to get one growing. Next up, we need a rotten, a rotten one. So if you go to the left then, and now click the tree monster, you will see that it, it has turned rotten. Now, the last one, which is even a bit more finickier, is to get the tough one. So once you press the X button and you've got the normal radish, go to the tree monster, click the X button, go back, and then just wait for the tree monster to pop the other side. And then once he does, click the X button next to the radish again. That should then turn it into the tough one. And providing that the monster has seen it, he will pick it up, try to eat it, and then throw it, giving you the third one and the vegetable grower achievement. Uh, so yeah, it's the, the first two were not bad. The tough, uh, the tough radish was a bit more trickier to get there. But hopefully I explained that well and you've got that pretty cool. And pretty quickly too. So head over to the right hand side, you're going to see a giant rock, which is going to turn into a troll when you press the X button. And then what you need to do is now offer him all three types of radishes. So make sure to do the the normal radish first. So make sure to do the normal radish first. And then the rotten radish. Again, important that you've got to do it in this order. If you give him the tough... Uh, the tough one first, you won't be able to give him the other two and you'll miss the achievement. So once you've given him the normal one and then the uh, rotten one, then give him the tough one. He'll let us pass and get the tribute. This is just a tribute. Couldn't remember the toughest radish in the world. No. No. This is Troll Brow. The greatest song in the world. Alright, All right, that's enough singing of Tenacious D. Sorry. I'm sorry, but it's just too cute. Right, so once you've done that, we've gone over to the other side, slightly over to the right. Yeah, eventually. There we go, so slightly over to the right. Then what we're going to see is a head, floating head. Press the X button. Oh, I'll, what I'm going to say from now on is um, use the ring or something like that. So use the ring, and what you got to do then is just wait until... Old Ed Balls here has finished, and then you'll get the Mellow Maniac achievement. Right, so what we need to do now is head over to the left and use the ring on the tree monster. And you have to, again, so this is sort of, you need to time this right so that the uh, head is singing and that the tree monster sees him and then throws him on the ground in pure disdain. Um, so he's actually going to start walking back for me now. Unless I think I got... Yeah, yeah. So annoyingly, he starts walking back. So you need to get him walking over to the right. And then, once he's walking over to the right, go over to the head and then get the head singing. But make sure that they're close enough so that the tree can still see him and uh, grab him. So do it about now. So once he stops, get the head singing. And then you should be able to be in range of both of them. And then he'll be all like, Nyaaah! Get his Arnie tree voice out. Uh... Right, so, snap the ring. Snap your finger, girl. Boy. Boy toy. And then go ahead, get the floating head up, and get him to... Uh, follow you whether he does no we can actually just use a bridge we are going to get him to follow us in just a bit there are two bridges that we can cross there or two sets of branches to make a bridge head over to the right hand side obviously uh, continue all the way to the right and then we're going to snap our finger here by the tree monster he's going to nip on to the right and then we are going to so we actually need him to come up onto this platform here in order to stand on it. So if he could, very kindly, hurry his ass up. There we go. So once he's onto the platform, make sure to click the button, uh, click the ring, use the ring just outside so he stops. 
and we can't actually grab the axe yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the right and we are going to get up onto a troll's head. So we can just nip it on. And from here, we can jump over once and then we can click use the ring again. We'll fall down, but we will get the Parker Man achievement. There we go. So that's how you do that. Just fall from his hand. And that'll do, Slim Shady. That'll do, pig. Right, so now we can grab the axe. For some reason, a death made us stronger, apparently. But we'll take it. Okay, so what we're going to do, head over to the right. We are going to use the ring. In fact, it's a bit tricky. But to get the troll sleeping, we need to use the ring uh, a little bit away from him. And then he'll fall asleep. So if you use the ring right next to the troll, he'll stay awake. You need to go just outside of his jurisdiction, as it were. So we're going to drop down. And then we're going to use the ring once again. And the head's going to be all like... I mean, that is creepy. If that is what creep is, the creepy brothers are doing, they're doing a fine-ass job of it. All right, so again, in order to get over to the other side, you're going to need to use the ring just outside of the troll's jurisdiction as it were to make him fall asleep and then we can just simply jump right back to the other side excuse me right use the axe just over to the right hand side of the tree right here sort of in the middle between tree monster and sleeping hippie head use the axe or the pickaxe and with that we get another little item which we'll grab in a little bit uh, for now, we're going to use the ring on the head. We've already got one door open, so we head over to the left. The other gate will open. And because we've used the ring, he's going to oh, his way out of it. It's a good song, and it's creepy. Right, so going past the head here to the right. Uh, use the tree monster. And he, we're going to jump up, and he's going to follow you. He's going to follow you then to the left. And then we're going to jump down. Or jump across, sorry. And we're going to stop. So we're going to use the ring right as the monster is right in the middle of the tree right there. He's going to fall down. And that is going to... We're going to get the Necromancer achievement as well. So we'll just jump to the other side. Drop down. And again... And then make sure to grab the hand, which uh, the the old the old tree bag's hand. And then once you have, that is where you're going to get the necromancer achievement. Don't worry about the floating head; he is going to go in there. We do need all three of them to go into pig mouth, whatever that is. So that's all good. Uh, so press the uh, so use the use the ring once again in order to uh, wake him up or get him up, alive him as it were. Uh, and again, we are going to need to use the branch, his tree branch hand. And there we go. So we can pop that in there. That's basically just going to... I mean, I suppose it keeps the way open for us. I think that's what it's going to do. Right, so let's go and grab the other two heads now. The first one, remember, is on the left. So use the ring in order to make a bridge, in order to go back to the left. And then we are going to snap our finger again. Get him to follow you, and he'll automatically nip into the pig mouth. That'll do, Slim. That'll do, Jim. Right, let's head over to the right-hand side, where, of course, the third head is on the troll, or next to the troll. So, again, we're going to need to jump to the other side. So, we need to... Be so, obviously, what we need to do is use the ring, so they're both going to be awake anyway, which is fine. And then use the ring away from the troll once again, in order to get the troll to sleep. And then we can just head over to the left and get the head in the pig mouth.
So once we've climbed inside then, this puzzle will be the same every single time, so you can just follow along, but we have to do this in a specific order. In a very specific order. Um, and basically what you're going to do, we're going to use, uh, snap our finger again, we're going to use the ring. And then we're going to pick up this, and it's we're going to basically do the whole thing with music, you know, one of those guys. So you can look to the left, in the middle, and in the right. So first of all, we... Get, so obviously if you do it wrong, they'll give it a little chuckle like that. So we're going to start off in the middle. And then the left. And then the right. And then the, the left again. And then the middle. And then the right. And then the middle. And the right again. And then the left. And then the middle. And that should be squad golden negative nuts. Oh no, we're in a dreamlike sequence. As long as it ain't with those freaking owls. Remember from Creepy Tale 2? Yeah, those sucked. Anyway, head to the right so you can uncrappen your pantin. Thankfully, this is the only time we have to deal with the owls in the game, so we're happy with that one. Alright, so, um, we can't actually get this... Oh, we can actually get the bird up just yet. Um, but we don't need him just yet. We're going to come back to him in a little bit. So, head over to the right-hand side. You're going to see this big old house, uh, which we can't get into yet. And you're going to see the the monsters, the first monsters. It's a Kvarg, or Kjarg, or whatever they're called. So, sneak down. And we're going to press the, uh, use the ring by the left tree, and then head, crawl over to the right tree, and use it with the, with that one. And they're going to be all like, Arr, give me fruit. And we're going to be like, nah, blood, no fruit for you. And since they're just chilling but they we'll head back to the left. Coming out of here. And then we will go to the right of where that one Gvarg monster was, and pick up an item off the ground. Head back down and crawl to the right. Was it? It's a Kyarg. Well, let's just call it a. Let's go. Just just call it a Kmart. Pretty much sounds like Kmart, doesn't it? So you're gonna crawl all the way over to the right. Uh, we're going to uh, use the ring in order for this Kmart to pick up the berries and start chewing. I mean, he really likes them. He's even licking his hand on that as well. So then we can uh, go back into the middle, stand up, and we're gonna pick up this piece of paper. Oh, we are going to use the ring there just to get the Kmart a little bit more distracted. So, I don't know if this is a bug, but on the boulder that the Kmart was sitting on to the right, there was a symbol, and there, yes, there was a bit of an edit there, sorry about that, but there was a symbol. Now, once you've interact, once you interact with that symbol, that goes on to the star map of the uh, what we just picked up. Um, but if it's not a bug, then you've seen, you've seen the golden orb sort of floating around, that was it. So head over to the left, 
and you can see these four planety looking things which basically are planets if you just you uh use the inventory use the star map next to them you can see the four floating orbs get the um get your star map back out and then what that'll do all the four floating orbs uh once you've interacted with it and they're all floating in the air will now float into your paper but again i'm not sure if this is a bug but before the symbols were actually on the planets and you had to interact with them one by one in order to get them in your star map. But I don't know if they just changed it to make it easier. Who knows? So heading over to the left, uh, first things first, we are going to jump back over and we're going to interact with this poster in order to... Ah, oh, God damn it, not the, not the door! Do it look like I wanted to interact with the door? No. But of course, it's my stupid fat thumb fingers. Yeah. Right, so once you've interacted with the poster, you will get the uh, pin. We don't care about the poster, but it is the star pin what we need. Heading back over to the right. Now we're going to get another achievement in just a bit for knocking out a night jar, which is that bird to the left while moving. So we're going to interact with the door now. And again, you just have to do this in a specific order. So first of all, it's right at the bottom. So basically six o'clock. And then it is 2 o'clock. So top right hand corner. I'm just going to say it as I see it. Then it is 7 McLaughlin. So bottom left. And then it is 3 o'clock. And then it is 12 o'clock. Hey, there we go. I just, for some reason I just found it easier to say it in clock language rather than anything else. So that's good. Once we are in, we're going to get goblin bags right here. And he's going to be like, hey, screw you, man. I'm out of here. Hey. Okay, so a few things to do as always in this room. We're going to climb up the ladder first of all. And we're going to pick up the item here from the right, which is going to be one of the star pins. And then if we head over to the left. Now, if we head over to the left, we can see we're going to use the... We are going to use the lever in order to get the light shining down so we can actually see what we're doing. And of course, down is always the other way. the Always the opposite way when you go up. See? Proper science-y boy, me. Um, now, this basically is just a puzzle where it's going to tell us to put the uh, couple of pin stars. So, uh, but I'll just tell you anyway, of course. So, we head over to the right. We're going to interact with the Mega Globe. Now, first of all, what you're going to need to do is... Uh, we're going to have to put one of the star pins in, actually. So, we'll try that again. So, first of all, put it in the mushroom. Put it, uh, well, basically right in the sort of second one, right there. Don't use the other one, press the A button and that will get that one smashed and the third one will appear then on the desk of where we just were. So pick both of them up again and then this time we're going to head back to the right to the globe and pop the star pins in its proper location. So first of all, right on the butterflies, right in the middle of the butterfly, just uh, next to the two antennas. Next up is one down on the mushroom looking one where we got earlier and then over on the left hand side of the coffin looking stars right there once you've got those three in in those locations press the a button again and that'll get the door open noisy and slicey so heading on up to the end So what we're going to need to do, we are going to need to give the Goblin Professor um, the dirty lens, which we found on the ground earlier on. So that's how you're going to get past this bit. Whoa. You've brought a part of my- I'm on your side. Where do you- I'm from some other- I always knew- Have you come to rest? I am- There is no- You're right. That's no- It's too bad we can- I'll track them down. 
So, first things first then, after the conversation, head over to the right past the goblin. You're going to find a small skull on the ground. So, we're going to pick that up. Don't worry about the Kmart sleeping. We'll come back to him later on. So, we're going to head back down and then back outside. And then we're going to head to the right again. Obviously, we're going to be needing to crawl. Because we ain't gonna, because we're gonna get mashed up by those big teethy Kmart's. So let's not do that. So head all the way to the right. And remember, you would have seen a skull or a skelly or a skelly hand, as my my two-year-old boy would say, skelly hand. Uh, throw in the skull, and he's gonna be all like, eh, "Pet that boy to sleep." Delicious. Right. So now we can head to the right, and we're basically gonna get rid of one of these Kmart's who's still sucking on his hand, by the way like a infant so we're going to use the ring here on both of the berries he's basically going to see the first one and be all like damn son there's some good berries out of nowhere and then the second one he's going to see he's going to go damn son and then he's going to go damn son i'm falling son he's not very panicky though is he in all fairness just uh, tries to get himself up but we're going to mash him up now son and the way we're going to mash him up now, son, is if we head to the left, obviously, because there's nowhere else to go, we're going to use our ring just right of the campfire after we pick up the uh, berry. We are now going to use the ring right about here. And that's going to give him the strength to fall and die. And once that's done, we are now going to grab the strength to muster up and grab his knife. So we'll take it. So remember, you should have picked up one of the berries just to the right hand side of the campfire and that knife right there. Once you do have both, head to the left, back down the old crawly hole and to the left again. And this is where we're going to get the uh, slow, uh, no, the Games with Death achievement. So, get the Night Jar moving. Come on. Move, boy. Oh, no, you're going to need to give him a berry, sorry. Give him a berry. Once you've alived him, you're going to need to give him the berry. That'll do, and he's going to start walking. Now, again, to knock him out, you need to use the ring outside of his area. There we go. So once you've done that and he's moving and again, you have to do it with the circle outside of where the bird is moving. Once you've done that though, you'll get the games with death achievement and then you can just alive him back and he will eventually go to the second planet here, peck it open and that'll get us another telescope part. And when we've done that, we can then go ahead, use the Kmart knife, or Kyarg. Kyarg for short, but Kmart. And that'll get us the telescope part, and that's job done. So that should be two... No. Thanks, one... Birdie. Thanks, Birdie. Yes, two telescope parts, actually, that we've got now. So let's head inside and back to the left and back up. And you're going to need to give Professor Goblin Nose the two parts. Thanks. Fantastic. The Sir, the walk has awoken. Oh, mate, you can't lie there, but what are you doing? Waiting for the bus? <laughs> anyway, uh, press the Y button to get your inventory out. Use the knife on the Kmart to stab him dead. <sighs> ah. 
Then we're going to head over to the right and use the ring next to Professor Goblin Ears. And that's going to rescue him. Hooray! So it's a bit, uh, bit painful, but, you know, beats being dead. My, oh my! It's a magical ring. You just happened to... I got lucky. Feeling better? I only... Let me set up the top. Okay, so uh, the professor didn't even decide to clean the dirty eyepieces, so we're going to get a bit of, uh, we're going to get some STDs in our eye, but that's fine. So what we're going to do is you're going to head the camera all the way down and then over to the right. You'll need to press the A button in order to focus. Don't worry about that bit. It's the one Kmart monster, the cook. There it is. So focus that. Focus the camera or the lens or whatever, and that's the first tick done. Slightly over to the right, you're going to see the girl that we need to, or the princess, the girl, whatever it is that we need to rescue. And then slightly over to the right again is the two Kmarts that we are going to need to get rid of too. Those beasts! Oh, Martin! I can't take the... Mm. There, you'll have to hurry! So another achievement coming up here. Once he is going to fiddle with all these, and there's basically going to be a secret passage open up, make sure to not go through the secret passage first of all, uh, because that is going to get us the slow achievement. So remember to not go through it first of howl. Go ahead. The tunnel leads to them. There we go. Look, he's absolutely fuming with us right now. He's like, ah, oh, you st you stupid. At least we've done all that work for nothing. Anyway, once you've coughed, he's going to be like, oh, what are you still doing here, douche nozzle? And he's going to do the whole thing again, and of course, we're going to go through the passageway this time. Go ahead, the tunnel leads. Right, so we're going to do a, another, I say it's easy puzzle, it's easy because I'm telling you what to do, but otherwise you'd have to look at the right hand side and look at some numbers, but we're going to just interact with this milkshake machine, this drink machine, whatever it is, and we just need to input some numbers, first of all, with the water symbol there on the left, put it to two, and then the one on the right we're going to put down to four, oh, try that again, so two and four, and then press the middle button, and that's going to get us some deliciousness. <laughs> Lovely job, mate. It smells like crap, but yay, we've drunk worse. Uh, so head over to the left, uh, to the right there, sorry, and then use the 60% uh, absinthe. I say 60%, it's more like 80%, isn't it? 80% um, <laughs> absinthe on it. That's going to get the ladder down, and that'll be... Good as new, or crap as new. Head down. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, manipulation with this Kmart right here. So, first things first, head over to the left. And we are going to you go to the hand and gra uh, give him the knife. Very risque. Just obviously don't go next to it. Pick up one of the skulls. And then go to the right. And we are going to use the skull with the Kmart. So once you've um, alived him there with the ring, head over to the left 
And once here, and the symbol appears, we can use the skull. And then he's going to be all fuming. And then he's going to get staved. Then he's going to get staved. Stag. Right, use the ring on him again. And this is purely to grab the recklessness achievement. So, there we go. Obviously, he's not going to be alive. He is as dead as dead. But uh, we attempted to heal a Kmart. And we're also going to interact with the well there as well. That will be the seventh and final well in order to get the Screamer achievement. So that should be two achievements you got there. The recklessness for using the ring on the already dead Kmart. And the final well that should have been. Welly, welly, welly. Right, so now we're going to have to get rid of El Kukov. And firsty first first. Head over to the left, and we're going to grab, where is it? We're going to use the ring, sorry. So we're going to use the ring on the left-hand side first in order to get a bug alive, and he's going to start crawling up. Head back down to the right. And we're going to, he's going to be fuming his old uh, broski right here. So just wait until he's finished. Once he starts going over to the right, remember to stay behind him slightly, but follow him. There we go. So once he nips off to the right, he's going to start licking his big fat gums. Die, disgusting, mate. And then what we're going to do when when he goes far enough to the left, we're going to go out and we're going to pr use the ring next to the princess in order to get the healer achievement. Not the bandit healer and the bluey healer achievement. Nope. So just quickly go up to her, press the X button, and then drop back down into the trees, or the plants, whatever, and you've got the achievement, we're just going to wait for Broski to start again. Once he starts using the knife to, uh, using the, oh, is that supposed to be a hamster or something? Once he starts, uh, you can go ahead, go as close as you can, use the ring, and that's going to get his hand flying off, bro. <laughs> oh, that looks painful. And yes, sucking on your already chopped off hand is going to make it better, right? Rago. Right, so now he's going to be chilling there forever. You're good. Head to the right in order to grab the hand. The now, <laughs> the now mashed up hand. Continue heading to the left. And... Yeah, the bug's gonna, just going to keep doing that. So what we're going to do is press the X button next to him. And eventually, once you've used the ring on him, he's going to die a horrible, painful death, which is good for us. So pick up the um, the antler, which just came off the bug. So the bug antler. Give it a little wiggle wiggle and a little tea bag right on him. You die. Pick up the eyeball. There's another eyeball here we're going to grab. Uh, again, we're going to be doing this for a few achievements. And then pick up... One of the radishes as well, and pop them in your pocket. Right, uh, now you have to do this kind of quickly. What we're going to do is use the ring next to the caged creature. He's going to eat a mushroom. Oh, it's going to eat a mushroom. Next, we are going to go next to it and then use... Uh, we're going to use the eyeball, first of all. Eyeball ball. How the hell did you manage to... How did they manage to cage a creature like that in the first place? Anyway, next up, use the radish... And if it doesn't work, well, just try it again. And then once he's done that, you'll get the achievement. So then quickly use the ring and then pick up the mushroom. So that is because uh, we need actually need one of those mushrooms as well. So you would have got the feeder achievement. Again, if you somehow manage to miss it, you can just pick up an eyeball, feed it to the monster and then use the ring and then quickly pick up the mushroom if you need to, but hopefully you've got that. So we're gonna head over to the right hand side, speak to El Prince Arcio. Only if a simple fish- What's your name? I'm Martin. Rosa. How do you- My nanny and I were t I tried to run away, but the rest is hate. Hang on. You- So that means I get the feeling I've done some- Calm down. Did you find the key? Mm -mm. And once you've done the awkward, almost touching thing, go ahead, give her one of the reeking mushrooms, or try to give her a reeking mushroom, and that'll get you the dinner served. Come and get it. Ding dong. 
Ding dong! Or just dinner is served achievement for short. So head back over to the left, pick up another eyeball. We are going to need uh, just one more of those, so grab another eyeball. Head over to the right-hand side. Again, Prince Ass, we'll come back to you. So we're going to go to the right this time. And we need to do some sacrificing, some offering. So we're going to use the ring, first of all. And then, I don't think it's in a particular order, but follow along just in case. We're going to put the bug antler on the left one. And then we're going to use the eyeball onto the next one. And then over to the right-hand side again. Use the ring. And then we're going to use the mushroom on the left-hand side, right-hand side one. And then the final item, what we got, is the hand... So we'll just leave those there. That's good. Head over to the right now. And on the floor, we are going to see... Uh, we're going to grab this pellet. This pelt. I think it's called a pelt, isn't it? Yes. This hairy man's rug pelt. We're going to use this next to the sleeping Kmart. There we go. And then head over to the left. Slightly, we can uh, use the lever. And then head over to the left of the other sets of altars, or whatever you want to call them. Use the other lever. And that's, ta-da, that's going to get us a nice little bow and arrow once we have done a few more things. Oh, you do, you may have to be a little bit quick there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, be quick with that. Ooh, mama. Riches, gold, treasure! But of course we're going to leave all that because why wouldn't you try to bring some with you, huh? Jesus, man. But we do get a bow and arrow. And what we're going to do is, well, we're going to kill this guy. You think your bone can hurt me? Not in the morning. There you go. You'll do that automatically, so that's all good. Whoa! A magical bow! Okay. Now I am ready to face the... Right, so we're going to head over to the right. Uh, this next achievement we're going to get is pretty much unmissable. I think it is story related. So we are going to head to the right. And then you're going to see a prompt appear just next to this tent entrance. There it is. And you can press the A button. That'll kill the um, Kmart with a bow. And that'll get you the training achievement. Still can't believe that's rare, mind. And then what we're going to do is head into the tent. And we are going to have a face-off with a Kmart boss. Yes, there's not many bosses in these Creeper Tales series, but there is one here. And before we kill the boss, uh, again, it's just a case of, you know, you press the A button to attack. And then what you're going to see is the target. Um, there's going to be a target that's floating. Now, uh, you need to press up to jump and then down to roll. And obviously, as you're going to see, um, he's going to spew some stuff in the middle. Want, or once you've seen something highlighted, just quickly nip over to the other side. But in order to get the next achievement for Miss Target, you actually have to hit the... Um... Oh, I just got sliced up there. That's fine. Uh, so you need to hit the pieces of wood. So you, there's one on the one side, and you have to do the other side as well. And when he tries to get you with his uh, pincer wieners, obviously jump up, you know, or roll away. Uh, so head over to the left now. So once you've got one one bow there, the achievement won't unlock there, unfortunately. You're going to have to go over to the left and then press the A button to hit the pieces of wood in the top right-hand corner. Oof, almost got spewed on right there. Oh, God damn it, would you stop? I'm trying to teach all the ladies and gentlemen how to get an achievement. Right, there we go. So once that one is done, now you can just go ahead and you need to shoot all the eyes off. So again... As soon as you see uh, something highlighting or moving, just move literally to the opposite side. If it's his wiener pincer thing, um, obviously just jump as soon as he's about to hit you. Uh, but get rid of all the eyeballs first.
Right, so for this next easy, still easy phase of the boss, what's going to happen after he drops us down? We, we can't shoot him anymore. He's going to still continue with this same lot of attacks, but there's going to be some debris. So after he does that, there's going to be some debris that falls down. Quickly jump over and press the A button in order to throw it at him. Now, we just need to keep doing this until an axe falls down. So continue on your way, lovers. comes here it comes here it comes hey sorry i was late busy killing everything now i'm just a come back stuck in a stutter sorry vended singing again right so once you've grabbed the axe this is going to happen and then you're going to automatically throw it at him and that is going to be deader than the dead thing in deadland with explosive brains again creepy bros wanted something creepy and by god did they do that nice Right, so once you hear a noise, you're going to head over to the left into the chest. You're also going to get the achievement called Berserk for killing the boss. Predictably. So unfortunately, this isn't the end. It's not a case of, oh no, the boss is dead. We'll just go on our separate ways. No, no, we have to do some sneaky stealth stealthing now. So once the Kmart is headed to the left, you're going to follow him as quickly as you can. If you get caught, that's fine. You will literally just start in the same, more or less the same spot. So wait until he nips off to the right. And then we are going to head all over to the left. And we are going to be grabbing the prince ass. Use the key, she gone please, no wait, use the key, and she gonna say please, and you're gonna say she's, for some reason. Okay, so now we're gonna have to do the same sort of stealthy thing and grab the princess along with us. Okay, so once we've headed to the right, now obviously it's a case of we just need to wait and uh, time this to slight, I mean the timing isn't too bad, you don't have to do it as perfect as possible. So what we're going to do, we're going to wait for old broski to head to the left and then, uh, ooh, no, 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 yes, we are. Sorry, I got a little bit slow with my rhymes right there. And I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky with that one. So try and uh, head as far right as you can. And then again, as soon as Broski there heads to the left past the princess, press the X button to get her coming to you. There we go. So again, you have to do it quick so that the... Again, you think the prince ass would move a little bit uh, quicker, but never mind. Pardon? 
Martin. So, obviously, going back to the right and into the next area now. So as soon as Brosy goes to the right, we're going to follow him. There we go. And then we're going to hide once again. And then it's just a case of waiting. So as soon as he goes to the left, and then as soon as he starts going back to the right, press the X button to get the princess going. So you can take your time or you can be quick with this one. If uh, the old Kmart's going to the left, you can swing her in. So as soon as he starts going to the left, uh, bring her back in. So this next part may be a little tricky. I did get caught uh, once or twice, I think. So, uh, so what we need to do then, again, obviously, as soon as the dude on the left is has gone to the left, we're going to call the princess, obviously, again. So as soon as he goes to the left. And it's this next part, which may be a little bit tricky. Oh, sorry. As you can see there, there is a bit of an edit because I messed it up. Which sounds about right. So... Uh, let's try that again once the princess is with us. I've gone continued straight to the right as well uh, You don't have to do that I just uh, found that there was enough time in order for me to go straight to the right and then as soon as he starts going to the right The Kmart dude right here get the princess come in as well And then that should be enough time in order for you not to get caught by the Kmart on the left And we just wait now until he nips off and then head to the right and do the same thing. Get her coming with you. And then again, just wait. Uh, sh yeah, wait until he goes to the left and then head over to the right side barrels. Right, we're not too far off the end now, so we're going to wait for old headbags to look to the right. And then once he does, we are going to, well, eventually, we are going to sneak to the bushes. So again, just wait until he looks to the right. And there we go. So he will see us, but of course, we're going to be stuck behind the, bu uh, the bushes. Grab the, it's like a weighted club or something. Once the Kmart is not looking, wait until the head is looking to the left and then quickly sneak up behind him, press the Y button and use the big club on him. And he's going to give him the kick of football of lifey life. the opposite. We're just like pirates. So... Anywhere as long as it's far... So we're almost done, but not quite. So, um, now if you remember, Ian, I can't remember if it was the last creepy tale or the creepy tale before, 
uh, we basically had to smash a lot of these uh, enemies in the head. So it's literally just a case of waiting for an enemy to get close to the boat. You can hold the A button for a heavy attack or just keep spamming the A button for a couple of weak attacks. Either way, just keep heading back and forth until they no longer pose a threat. Now, they will start, they can actually climb up onto the boat uh, right by the princess. So obviously just get over to the right like now and then uh, we'll turn around and stab them in the head. We made it, we made it, we made it. But since I bet it on the other team, uh, unfortunately we won't be going out for pizza. Oh, what Simpsons episode is that from? But yes, we made it and we're back with our friends, the Chew Crappers. And there we go, that is it. So we're gonna get two achievements here coming up. Uh, the fairy tale is over for escaping from the other place, of course. Now, we need to watch the post credits, which means do not skip the credits. Um, I don't think you can do it from the settings menu. I'm not, uh, not too sure, I don't think you can. So just to be on the safe side, do not skip the credits. They only take about a minute, a minute, minute and a half, something like that. Do not skip the credits, and then you'll get the achievement for watching the post-credits. So, I'm going to leave it here then, guys and gals. So, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the game. It's another another classic in the Creepy Tales series. Hope you enjoyed the guide as well, and that it helped. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout-out, as always, to all my Patreon supporters, YouTube members. And don't forget to check out my true crime slash gaming podcast called Gaming's Darker Side. You can find that on any um yeah spotify and apple and amazon and anywhere you get your podcasts so thank you so much again guys and gals i'll see you in the next one big live